The Junkers Ju-86, not a plane that most people are familiar with, but one that played a very interesting role in World War II. It was part of the highest altitude aerial battle in the history of the war, at over 8 miles above the Earth. Originally developed as an airliner for Lufthansa in 1934, it was pressed into service as a bomber, performing poorly in the Spanish Civil War. A low-wing, twin-engine monoplane, it shared similar wings to the Junkers Ju-52, and had a crew of four. The Ju-86 was one of very few German types to serve also in the British Commonwealth. South African Airways operated 17 of the older models, and at the outbreak of war, they became part of the South African Air Force. They operated as coastal patrol aircraft and later served with the SAAF as bombers in the East African campaign against the Italians until finally retired from service in September 1942. The German Luftwaffe used them from day one of World War II. Used in action again in Poland in 1939, some Ju-86s were thereafter converted into the P variant with a longer wingspan, a pressurised cabin, just two crew members, and Junkers Umo 207A1 turbocharged two-stroke opposed piston diesel engines. The Ju-86P was designed to fly comfortably at the height of 39,000 feet or 12,000 metres and could go higher, and was used for photo reconnaissance missions at altitudes where Allied fighters couldn't catch them. There were two versions, with around 40 Ju-86 converted into either the P-1 high-altitude bomber or the P-2 photo-reconnaissance aircraft. Next, the Luftwaffe developed the Junkers Ju-86 R-1 high-altitude reconnaissance plane capable of cruising along at 50,000 feet, or 15,000 metres, above the Earth. That's over 9.5 miles high. That is considerably higher than most commercial jet airliners cruise today. To all intents and purposes, the Ju-86 was the U-2 spy plane of its day. The aircraft's diesel engines offered excellent fuel economy and were supercharged to deal with the thinner air at high altitude. No nation had used aircraft regularly at such altitudes before, and many technical problems had to be solved concerning instrument failure due to extreme cold, and even contact with the jet stream, which blew towards the aircraft as they entered British airspace. The reconnaissance version was unarmed, and would cruise at 186 miles per hour at altitude, relying on the altitude to avoid fighter interception. UK reconnaissance overflights ceased for a while as Hitler concentrated on the invasion of the Soviet Union, but the Ju-86R2, the bomber version, was sent on high-altitude nuisance raids against Britain in mid-1942, dropping single 250kg high-explosive bombs. On the 24th of August 1942, a pair of R2s droned high over the south of Britain. Two bombs were released, one on Camberley and one on Southampton. A Polish Royal Air Force squadron was scrambled to intercept the intruders, but their Spitfire Mark Vs couldn't reach the Germans' altitude. This was, to say the least, annoying. The German aircraft were effectively immune from attack over the UK and could bomb at will and the Ju-86s kept coming, ten sorties over the following three weeks. Up to now, the single bombs being dropped had been relatively harmless, but on the 28th of August, a Ju-86 landed a bomb in the centre of Bristol during the morning rush hour, killing 48 civilians and injuring 56. Something had to be done, and fast. The Spitfire Mark V lacked the legs to reach the Ju-86s, but the new version that entered service at the time, the Mark IX, showed promise. It had a Rolls-Royce Merlin engine with a two-stage supercharger, 
A special interception flight was created at RAF Croydon, near London, commanded by Flight Lieutenant Jimmy Nelson of the RAF's Eagle Squadron, made up of Americans serving in the RAF. Another of the pilots was pilot officer Prince Emmanuel Galitsin, a refugee Russian prince, a great-great-grandson of Catherine the Great of Russia. The pilots were put through rigorous testing and training, including periods in an altitude chamber, to prepare for a fight at an altitude above the earth where no planes had clashed before. Two Spitfires were carefully modified for the mission. It was important to reduce the weight of the aircraft as much as possible to increase their chances of getting up to altitude, and each aircraft was reduced by 450 pounds by substituting the metal propeller for a wooden one and removing all four Browning 303 machine guns, leaving just two 20mm cannons. Prince Galitzine managed an altitude of 43,000 feet during a training flight, the highest ever for a Spitfire. Remarkably, during the high-altitude flight, the prince's cockpit was not pressurised. He relied on an electrically heated flying suit and his primitive oxygen mask and supply to survive. On the 12th of September 1942, British radar detected an incoming radar flying at a very great height. It was a Ju-86 piloted by Senior Sergeant Horst Goetz and his observer Second Lieutenant Erich Sommer of the Hohenkampfkommando, or High Altitude Bombing Squadron, based at Beauvais in northern France, heading for Portsmouth on England's south coast. Prince Galitzin was scrambled from Northolt and began steadily climbing towards the Ju-86 was reported to be. Passing 40,000 feet, Galitzin spotted the huge German bomber above him and in the distance. At first, Sergeant Goetz was unfazed. The Spitfire couldn't reach him. But as Galitzin's aircraft passed 42,000 feet, Goetz became worried. The Spitfire was still climbing. Quickly, Goetz released his bomb and injected nitrous oxide into his diesel engines to boost their power, attempting to climb higher. Goetz also immediately depressurized the aircraft's cabin, as one single shot from a Spitfire would cause the entire cabin to explode. Galitzin could see what was happening and jettisoned his 30-gallon external fuel tank, also climbing. Climbing slightly higher than the Ju-86, Galitzin pressed his attack from 200 yards behind the German. He managed a short burst before his left cannon jammed. This upset his aircraft's balance, and Galitzin flew into the Ju-86's contrail, ice forming on the Spitfire's canopy. Galitzin temporarily lost control of the Spitfire and manoeuvred for another shot at 44,000 feet. Three times he fired a burst, and three times the bomber's frozen contrail fogged his canopy. Galitzin, by now running low on fuel, broke off the fight after 45 minutes, the Ju-86 disappearing over the English Channel. It was the highest combat of World War II. Sergeant Goetz landed safely in France with one British 20mm cannon shell hole in his port wing. But with their bluff called the Ju-86s never returned to British airspace again, now that the Brits had a fighter capable of reaching them and blowing them out of the sky. The British eventually bagged a Ju-86 over North Africa, later in 1942 using a pair of modified Spitfire Mark Vs, which could climb higher over the desert due to denser air at higher altitudes compared to Europe. Horst Goetz would return to Britain, but in a better aircraft. Late in the war, Goetz was at the controls of an Arado AR-234 jet sent on photo-reconnaissance flights over the UK flying once again very high and out of the range of British piston-engine fighters. Both Goetz and Prince Galitzin survived the war and met 30 years later, becoming good friends. As Goetz commented to reporters in 1975, Emmanuel and I have talked about our battle in great detail, and we now understand each other's problems. The next time we fly against each other, we shall be able to do things better. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and share and also visit my new audiobook channel, War Stories with Mark Felton. 
You can also help support both of my channels at PayPal and Patreon. Details in the description box below.